What's poppin' guys, back like we never left, BDA, and I have another video here for you guys, and today I'm talking about the Rocks Pirates, or whatever the Rocks was, and if you're caught up to One Piece chapter 907, you know exactly what I'm talking about, because everybody's talking about it. There are several theories that are trending right now, and of course I have my own thoughts as far as like what I think the Rocks could be, but today I want to talk about all the theories that are trending, that are going around, because I feel like some of them are actually interesting, and could be somewhat believable. I think that's one of the good things of the community. When something comes about, everybody gets into their bag and they start researching and then we find a lot of good shit that could or could not be tied to the thing. But somehow the One Piece community or the One Piece YouTube community finds a way to connect things, right? Or you can, even the forms of, with uh, Reddit or Jackson, places like that. We always find a way to connect things. So Right now is a very interesting time with all the information we got from One Piece Chapter 907. But before I go any further, make sure you like this video and subscribe for more content like this. I will be putting out more content from 907 because it's a lot to discuss there. But for right now and today, we're talking about Garp, well pretty much the Rocks Pirates and what we think they are. In One Piece Chapter 907, Hina hinted heavily towards the fact that Big Mom and Kaido were connected at some point to these rocks pirates or to these, this rocks, whatever they are. And Garp became the hero of the Marines because he foiled their plans. When you think about something like this, it doesn't make sense due to the fact that Big Mom seemed to have been established at a very young age and was doing her thing. And Kaido's age, as far as like who he's rivals with, who Oda has mentioned as him being a part of their generation does not match up with Big Moms at all. Why would he be in the same crew or organization with Big Mom? It's honestly hard to say because Oda could go anywhere with this, right? But finding out that Garp the hero is not just because of Roger. So maybe the world government knows about what happened with Roger that Roger turned himself in because Garp got his hero title before then by taking down the Rocks Pirates or at least the captain of the Rocks. The translation is iffy because on Jaminus Box, who at this point is more credible to me, they have Rocks on Manga Stream, it's Locks. So it depends on whatever you want to believe. I think the Rocks thing is such an interesting topic just because the fact that this person controlled the era before Roger. So before Roger came along and took things over, this guy or this group, this organization was running things. Now for me thinking about the Rocks, I have several thoughts as far as like what it could be. My first thought is that the Rocks obviously was not just one person. It was not just one person in charge. I think it was one person who led them but it was the collective that made this group scary. Of course, there were no Yonko back then, but I think the rocks and how they carried out things, they had a balance in place that was not controlled by the world government, which made them even more scary. It made it even more dangerous for the world government because they couldn't control whatever they had going on. And with the rocks, they were immensely powerful. The world government, as far as establishing like a Shichibukai system, was probably not there yet. So to combat someone just as powerful or that powerful, it probably took the, the efforts of someone very strong to overcome the rocks and that is pointed out clearly by Garp doing so. Of course, that's just strictly headcanon. I'm thinking about how it could be back then before a Roger came along and kind of liberated the seas and that's stretching it a bit because I don't think the seas have been liberated. They've been more so enlightened and given a passion and motivation to go out to sea. But before then, I think the rocks pirates, maybe they were a deterrent for some other pirates because they were so powerful. But they ran the seas, and I think tr through fear, and being an organization. What I mean an organization is that this pirate, whoever the captain of this crew was, they started alliances. Um, for Big Mom and Kaido, again, the, the age disparity is huge as far as, again, the generation of Kaido and the generation of Big Mom. But Kaido could be just as old as Big Mom, but he started a lot later. One of my things I talked about in my last video is Luffy and Aruj or Capone. They're a lot older than Luffy, but they're technically a part of his generation. Kaido could have been the same way where back then he can hold a candle to someone like Big Mom, but as time progressed, he's gotten a lot stronger in his older age. He does owe Big Mom a huge debt, so that could play a huge role into Kaido's ascension. If Big Mom managed to somehow give him a devil fruit or some way to amplify his powers to ascend to the level that he is now, that is a lifelong debt because he owes everything, his status, everything he has right now to Big Mom, so I understand the dialogue if that is the case. However, I have a few problems with the Rocks Pirates with Kaido and Big Mom being on the same crew. 
with Big Mom. Again, she was established at a young age to be seemingly doing her own thing. She was running amok with Struzan, you know, whispering in her ear, and she was doing things and had a bounty at a very young age. What would be the cause for Big Mom to join up with Rox or would join a crew and follow someone else? It would have to be something to benefit Big Mom. And I saw a bunch of interesting theories online. So the things that I'm talking about doesn't necessarily have to be my thoughts. I already gave you my thoughts those out of the way. So what I'm going to talk about now is the theories that people have put out there that I thought were pretty interesting. I had the questions about the Big Mom thing and someone pointed out that Big Mom possibly back then was still trying to grow and she went on to this person to attain power. They also pointed out the fact where Katakura is being bullied. Katakura is being bullied in seemingly a place which showed a hotel. It was not like Totland or probably it was not Totland. That could be where the alliance was, right? And that's if you view the rocks thing as an alliance. It's similar to Baroque works where they gathered a bunch of pirates and they formed an alliance. Of course, depending on your translation that you read rocks or locks, they could have different things within it. What's interesting here is that someone came up with uh, an abbreviation as far as rocks and every letter meant something. I know people had an issue with that, which I'm not sure why it's just a fucking speculation. Relax. So people say that rocks could stand for something, right? And rocks or locks, depending on the translation again, so for R, it would stand for Rin Rin or Lin Lin. You know how Japanese are with L's and R's. So they're saying for rocks or locks, that stands for Lin Lin. Only Yui would stand for Empress of the Kucha, whoever that was at the time. And I have a basically a huge thing that's trending right now. I'm going to talk about that at the end because I thought that was extremely interesting. But that's the Empress of the Kuja was part of the rocks. Next was C and that's Chin Jiao the Drill. And this is the connection between Garp chasing down Chin Jiao. And they're basically applying him and assigning him as part of the rocks because of that history there and Chin Zhao, we know him to be someone a big player in the new world even though his bounty does not really support it 500 mil is a big deal i don't want to downplay that but based on what we know now the really top tiers in the world 500 mil is not that much honestly when you look at it. k would be kaido of the beast if kaido was a part of the rocks at that time k I don't think he was Kaido of the Beast back then. Maybe he was Kaido the Beast. And as Kaido grew and improved his skills and became stronger, he became Kaido of the Beast. And finally, S would be Shiki the Golden Lion. Now, Shiki being a part of this makes a lot of sense. He was trying to ally with Roger back then, if you remember the Battle of the Ed War. Shiki being a part of this, I, I like it. I like the fact that the Rocks may be just a group of pirates coming together, but they would still need to have a captain or someone who basically was in control of this organization. Again, it could be like Baroque works in which Crocodile was over, who was, he was Mr. Zero, but technically he was the captain of it, but it had like Mr. One, Two, Three, obviously um, those guys in there, it could have those people in there, but a lot of people from the organization grew and became notorious pirates. I like that idea a lot. I don't mind it at all. I'm not sure if that's the case. It's a lot of rationalization you have to do to kind of make it make sense, but I like it. I like the creativity behind that idea. Also trying to rationalize Kaido being that strong and Big Mom being as strong as she is now to back then. I don't think they had the power they did back then. Maybe Big Mom did, of course, but Kaido, I think he's relatively new. If he's been a part of Shanks generation, he rose to promise later down, not the same time as Big Mom because the era before Roger was obviously Big Mom because he snuck in and she viewed him as a child back then because she was before him, right? So the era back then was probably run by Rox, whoever that was, Big Mom, Shiki, and then Roger kind of stole the spotlight. Another idea was that Rox is just basically the Blackbeard to Roger and that he ascended just before Roger and Roger came and took the throne. And Rox is the person who went about things the same way Blackbeard is doing now. Very meticulous, you can say underhanded, but they did anything to kind of rise to power. I like that idea as well if they, there was a Blackbeard to back then and Blackbeard is basically inheriting his will Maybe it's not the will of D, but the will of something else. I don't mind that also, man. I just, I like the ideas behind these rocks things because I think that this is going to be significant because personally, I think that rocks or whatever it is, is the lurking legend, right? I think that's something that's going to be revealed maybe not next week or the week after that, but sometime soon, I think that's who Shanks is going to talk about. It just makes a lot of sense for it to be that same person, but also Oda could definitely throw a wrinkle in there where he could be talking about Blackbeard or Luffy here. The Blackbeard thing makes a lot of sense because he moved before to talk about Blackbeard with Whitebeard and moving again to talk about Blackbeard with the Gorosei, it makes sense based on how Shanks has been moving. Personally, I think Shanks is currently trying to track Blackbeard to take him down because Blackbeard is accumulating too much power for him to overlook anymore. And I think based on Luffy's ascension, the time may be now for him to approach Blackbeard. 
Shanks seems to have like a timing thing where he thinks the right time is the right time to do things. Where he didn't feel like Ace and Blackbeard should have met or should have met yet. It wasn't the right time for them. Maybe he thinks it's the right time now for him to meet Blackbeard. So whatever that is, I'm 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 here for it, right? The final part of this is the most interesting thing about this entire discussion, okay? And this is the fact that someone did research and they tagged me on Twitter. I don't want to forget who this person is. At Leo's World 2 on Twitter tagged me. And he showed me a basically an illustration of some manga chapters, including information that could tie a particular character to rocks. This person ended up being Shaki. Oh, now, shit. listen, Shaki, who was apparently the wife of Rayleigh, I'm not sure if that was confirmed, but people said it a lot. I don't, I don't remember him ever saying that's his wife or her ever saying it's her husband. Somehow, Shaki, the wife of Rayleigh, um, she is the person who people are tying to the rocks. Now, I'm going to show you information here that makes it very convincing that Shaki could be tied to this person again shout out to leo's world 2 for tagging me on twitter and this is now blowing up because people are seeing it and again it's very convincing so guys follow me here okay so after this i went back and i tried to find this ex these exact panels and it's in chapter 498 um with the straw hats they went to figure out how to coat their ship to go to fishman island and they walk in and Shaki, she's just got done beating someone's ass Right? For, I don't remember the reason, but for beating someone's ass. Again, Shaki's an older woman, and these guys are young, huge guys, and she just got done beating their ass, right? So that was a hint that Shaki is pretty damn powerful herself. So that's the first hint. In the midst of conversation, Shaki starts talking to Luffy, and then she mentions, hey, you have the same name as Garp. She then divulged the information that Garp used to chase her a long time ago. Now, think about someone like Garp, who is a very powerful Marine in his prime. Why would Garp be chasing someone like Shaki if she's not powerful herself? Hachi then chimes in and says, yeah, she used to be a pirate. Shaki then says, that was 40 years ago. In One Piece chapter 907, the Rocks pirates, they were more than 40 years ago. To so Shaki, her last time as a pirate was 40 years ago. She predated that era, right? She predated that time, which means that her era and her time was within the Rocks Pirates running amok. People are using this to tie Shaki to it and I like it a lot. I really like this theory just because it's, man, it makes so much sense. And another thing that I saw and someone else tagged me, I apologize, I can't remember your name, but they tagged me in this as well and I have to talk about it. We had interactions with Rayleigh and Kizaru on the Saboni Archipelago. And Kizaru said we would need basically more forces to bring in Rayleigh. Rayleigh is tied to Shaki, right? If they're married. And if Kizaru knows the history of rocks, because Kizaru is pretty old himself, Kizaru should know or have an idea of the affiliations of the Rocks Pirates and everybody that's a part of it and who they're currently affiliated with. If Kizaru knows that Shaki is affiliated with Rayleigh, to bring Rayleigh in, you'd have to take down Shaki as well. And if Shaki was a part of the Rocks Pirates, who the world government said if they came back would be insurmountable and they would don't know if they could overcome it, that's a lot on them for them to say, you know what, we can't bring Rayleigh in because we'd have to take her down as well. Let's go to Garp in chapter 501 where they're talking about Garp spotting Rayleigh. And Garp tells him, don't worry about it. Don't go after him. We'd lose an unimaginable amount of men. What I always wondered about is what Garp said after. Do you want us taking on two legends at the same time, especially now? So my immediate thought was that the thing with Ace and taking on Whitebeard and then taking on Rayleigh, that would be kind of crazy. What didn't make sense to me is Garp's demeanor and how he looked while saying it why would you say this so endearingly in a good way when taking on whitebeard means everything that is going on with ace it didn't make sense to me at the time now could rick could garp have been talking about taking on rayleigh and shaki i know we're putting shaki on a high pedestal here but based on everything that i just laid out could garp have been talking about those two it, it makes a very interesting case and is building it for shaki to be this not rocks but a part of rock if she was rocks that would be even more legit based on how Oda handles females, but I don't think she's rocks. I think she's a part of the organization or part of that crew. Another interesting tidbit I found out while reading or rereading these chapters was that Shaki, if Rayleigh and Shaki are married, does this basically confirm that they have an open marriage? Shaki even said, yeah, he may be shacking it up with some other women right now and he, he'll be back soon. We're just like, all right, either they have an open marriage or Shaki just doesn't give a fuck because she's doing her thing also. Her and Hachi were kind of like really close. I don't know if she's into that tentacle. You know what, let's, let's, let's just move on. The final thing was that Shaki was able to accurately or seemingly accurately tell Straw Hat or Luffy and the others about their strength. Luffy mentions that he's worried about Rayleigh being out there with all those strong rookies. And Shaki said, don't worry about them. He's a, probably a hundred times stronger than all of you. 
which shock she said that pretty confidently where i think she's strong enough to the point where she has crazy observation hockey which i'm inclined to believe that shocky could be i don't want to say legend because that's kind of hyping it up but someone of legend from back then man I, but let me know what you guys think based on what's laid out based on the information available do you think shocky could have some ties to rocks or could actually be rocks i don't think she's rocks but i would say she definitely has some affiliation with that crew it just makes too much sense not to be the case, man. Again, I'm not sure if I believe this all the way, but I like the idea and I like how, how it's kind of coming together. Man, it, I like it. I like it a lot. So let me know what you guys think. Could Shaki be this lurking legend? Could Shaki and Rayleigh be this force together where the world government did not want to take both of these guys on? It could just be Whitebeard. This is all speculation. I mean, we have some information here that could tie it back then, but oh man, this is great. I love when the One Piece community is alive in a buzz like this because... We come up with great ideas and it, it makes for interesting conversations. So guys, let me know what you think. Um, like the video if you did, subscribe to the channel if you have not, that'd be dope. Um, shout out to all my patrons. I appreciate all the support you guys give me. You make a lot of this possible because it's easier to just operate with uh, getting some of the best equipment that I can. So thank you guys so much. Again, like the video, subscribe if you have not, that'd be dope. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.